how we do it, corn fed style. So welcome to Ironman prep, a full day of training. You guys wanted to see this, so I'm gonna show you guys a kick-ass day. You know, by the time this day's over, my head's gonna hit the pillow and I'm gonna be dead. Um, but this is a realistic day in the life of training for an Ironman. It's currently 5.30 in the morning, I have my protein coffee, and um, yeah, after that bodybuilding show, now going into this Ironman, it's been a tough transition, but I'm going to talk about that and show you guys how everything that I'm doing from eating, um, recovery and training to perform at my maximum potential to complete two Ironmans in the next four months. With that being said, let's get into it. All right, so now that we got our running shoes on, we're caffeinated, it's time to go hit our first training session, which is a 50 minute run. On this 50 minute run, I'm going to be wearing a Garmin heart rate detector. So I'm trying to remember where I put it. Pre-run setup, we have the Garmin heart rate detector. This is because I need this to track my heart rate. Simply because MAF 180 method, 180 minus your age is the rate in which you want to train at to increase your aerobic base. With that, we're gonna be taking a scoop of BPN electrolytes. I'm gonna be showing you guys why. So sodium so important here in a second um, and throughout this video and we're also mixing that with water um, and I'm going to be sipping on that for my run. I will see you tonight. What's up little puppy? All right so basically how I'm training right now for this Ironman prep when running is I'll run a mile walk for a minute, run a mile and walk for a minute. And I do that for 50 minutes. So right now we're walking for a minute at about like three miles per hour. And then I run at 120 beats per minute. And basically what that does is I'm working different heart rate zones. When I'm running, heart rate goes up. And when I walk, my heart rate goes down, it just trains both heart rate zones, builds the aerobic base. So for anybody that's trying to get faster, don't just focus on running far and not taking any breaks. You can take a break, one minute break, and then get back into it. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, i gonna start this back up. So that's it. So right now we're chilling at about 125 beats per minute, feeling pretty good. And like I said, I feel like I could run forever at this heart rate. That's what it should feel like. Very comfortable. That's what walking does. It just brings down that heart rate. So we're gonna keep, keep at it. Don't worry about the time. Just worry about your heart rate and how you feel. Be able to have a conversation like this. And over time, man, your endurance is just gonna shoot up. Just like that, 50 minute run complete. All right, so just finished up a 50 minute run. Here is the Garmin heart detector. That's what I was wearing underneath. Um, that's just because this watch isn't super accurate. And because this Iron Man, I'm hyper focusing. I want everything to be in detail. So I bought this and it makes a huge difference. Don't always go by the heart rate on your watch. They're not always accurate. But with that being said, I'm gonna show you guys the meal post 50 minute run and then before our next workout and kind of go over my diet a little bit. So yeah, this is full day of Ironman training. This is kind of what it looks like. All right, so post run meal, we have seven ounces of chicken breast with sugar-free barbecue sauce. And then we have sugar-free ketchup on 270 grams of red skin potatoes. Then we have some carrots. Uh, the reason why I only eat carrots and potatoes for my vegetables is because carrots are an anti-estrogen, they reduce inflammation, and uh, they have a lot of fiber in it. Um, and it's the one vegetable that doesn't bloat me. Same with um, um, potatoes, they keep me satiated. And the chicken breast is easily digestible. If I had red meat before I get on the bike, I might feel a little bloated. 
um, so I save red meat for later in the day. But this is meal number one, post-workout. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I use going into this bike ride. We have an hour on the bike. So yesterday, I actually did last night, I had an hour that I did on the bike. And honestly, it was pretty hard. I was surprised. I thought, you know, it's just gonna be easier. I'm just gonna be nice and smooth, but it turned out to be really hard. I'm a little sore from sitting on the saddle. I got like the saddle sore. So, uh, yeah, the boys aren't feeling too good right now, but uh, it's all right. Um, we had padded pants that hopefully it'll start to feel better, but I'm gonna have in focus caffeine and some electrolytes. Uh, the reason why I use these two supplements is this just gives me better energy on the bike. Electrolytes right here have 500 milligrams of sodium in it. Um, and basically what that does is when you mix the two with water, for me, gives me enough energy, keeps me from cramping, keeps them, like my muscles full, um, and just really helps me during my endurance. So right now during Ironman training, as I said before in a video, Ironman is more about how long can you go without burning out, whereas sodium is super important for that and electrolytes because if you're not hydrated, if you're not using the electrolytes to carry the sodium and carry the water to where it needs to be, um, you're not going to be able to perform. So this is the stack. This is what we're going to have. We're going to go jump on this bike and then I'm going to show you guys my post-workout meal. So this ride is going to be an hour. So that's why I like sitting out here, um, being able to like at least sit outside. Now, when I moved to Texas, I think I'm going to be, I'll be riding every now and then outside, but for the most time, I think I'm going to be in my apartment. So I'm going to show you guys the setup down there and I can't wait to like start that down there and just like really focus on Ironman training. But right now we're, we're making it work. Um, so yeah, we're going to hop on this bike and then I'll explain to you guys the workout midway through the bike. So let's do it. All right. So this is the outfit. Um, I'm going to show you guys that out there. So we got to take our clip, clip in shoes. Um, this is the setup right here. We got the specialized shoes. Um, it's got the spindle on here on the side. So when I get out of the water, jump right on the bike, tighten them up rather than worrying about straps and laces. So I go with these. Also right here, we have our heart rate detector, Garmin. This is because most of my training is based on heart rate. The reason being, that's how you train efficiently. Um, you control the variables. So with that being said, right here, we are on um, Zwift. Uh, so right here, I'm connected to the Neo 2T2 Tax, however you say that. Uh, and then I'm also connected to my cadence, which is going to monitor my speed and my pace and my mileage. Um, so one thing cool about this trainer is when I go over like bridges and shit, it like vibrates. It makes it like, it gives it like a real approach. Um, and then I'm going to have my phone on a tripod. I normally listen to a podcast. I just zone in. So we're going to be hitting an hour long ride. We're going to see how many mileage. Uh, we put on in this hour. The goal isn't to worry about like speed right now. It's more like heart rate training. Um, and I'm going to talk about that once I'm done with the ride and explain my kind of like what I did and why I did it. Um, and Natasha is like going to monitor my heart rate and, and give me feedback after this ride. Um, and anybody can do this. Like I said, you sign up for the coaching. Uh, you guys can do this with me and you guys can also train for an Ironman. That's why I'm making these videos to inspire you guys to do the same thing. So with that being said, um, we're going to go hit this ride. Also, one last thing, that is the Neo Tax 2. Um, I can't stress this enough. Having a uh, stationary trainer is expensive, but it's worth it. in the fact that you can control the controllables, you don't have to ride when it just rained out. So, um, you know, we can still ride and not have to worry about like getting dark and stuff. We can ride early mornings. So we gotta stay consistent. And one last thing is all you do to hook it up is you take these, the back wheel off and you just need a sprocket. Throw a sprocket on the back and, and you're golden. So it's a bad day to be uh, a bike and some miles. We're gonna go kill it, so let's do it. So my workout, like I was saying, it uploads to my watch. So we're gonna start out with a 15 minute warm up. My cadence just connected. Um, so that's what it's gonna look like 15 minutes just spinning um, You don't want to You don't want to go too hard. We're just warming up the legs And just making sure like the contact there's no slack in the uh, Like when your pedal stroke just making sure that we're hitting contacts the whole way through and yeah, so 15 minutes and then we're gonna get into our workout. This is just a warm-up so. All right. 
so the warm up consisted of, I thought I was just gonna ride. Um, I got an update, I saw. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm holding watts, a certain wattage. I have to work my way up to 200 watts. I started at like 120. So basically I've been climbing the mountain. It feels like for the warm up for the first 15 minutes. This is very humbling. This workout's already kicking my ass and we're only 15 minutes in, so. This is what it's about, digging deep, seeing how hard you can push yourself and, and just setting these goals where you, you don't have anything left but you dig deep and you, you find out who you really are. So finishing up this warm up in about 30 seconds and then we're gonna get into it. All right, so we're trying to hold 270 watts right now. So we're kicking it up. Basically, this just keeps you in the right heart rate. Now we rest. Resting watts are like 150, 160. Every 30 seconds we kick up. We have like five rounds of this. So here we go. Nine seconds left, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, now, here we go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, now we reduce power. This just trains like the different level of heart rates. So, yeah. We are about 45 minutes exactly into the ride. Um, trying to keep the watts high right now. Um, 255 for the past like five minutes. I'm sipping on some electrolytes. The power of salt is crazy. I went the first 30 minutes without using this. Now I'm using salt, this BPN electrolytes, and it's 500 milligrams of sodium. When you're doing endurance, sodium's almost like a hack. It literally makes it so much easier and it refreshes your body. When I drink this, I can feel it hit right away. So, yeah, we're gonna throw this back, a few more squirts, and then kick up again. session now we did the workout so basically I would go for like five minutes at 250 watts and then I drop down to like 150 and just like fluctuate and that's gonna like help improve power and control my heart rate um, and now right now we're doing a cool down and we're just gonna hold like 200 watts and then slowly that's gonna taper down um, so yeah 20 minute cool down and then we're done, it's time to eat the next meal. You gotta, like I, I like to say, like I like this stuff because you're not restricting yourself like bodybuilding is. It's like, you're, you're fueling to perform a machine. Um, so, you know, it's just more, more, I enjoy it more in that way. But uh, yeah, so, only a few more minutes left. I'm gonna show you guys what I eat after. But look at, check out the sweat equity here on the floor. Look at that. That's what it's all about right there. Everything's covered. That's how we do it, corn fed style. All right, so real quick, we finished up with some BPN whey protein ice cream. In here I have uh, light and fit Greek yogurt. 
BPN whey blueberry protein, which is right here. And then I'm gonna throw in some New Jersey blueberries into this. And yeah, this will be post-ride recovery ice cream. All right, so we had six ounces of bison and then we had 270 grams of potatoes. Now we're gonna have holy guacamole, these little packs here are a game changer and also some jasmine rice. Um, so 100 grams of rice just to replenish after that ride. And then, um, yeah, we have our guacamole right here. So what I like to do is I like to just have a little bit of fat and protein before I go to bed and, and some carbs. So we got a healthy fat right here. I put a little sauce on there. And this is like my little mini chipotle bowl. And yeah, this is like what I'm eating to recover from the day or after that ride. Also, shameless plug, we got the Young LA on. Code French. But with that being said, hope you guys liked the video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna go dig in and eat this. I'll catch you guys in the next one.